All about Symbian and Mobile Industry Review. Welcome to NAFTEC. Welcome to the GSM Mobile World. Also joining me today is uh, David Osulin. David is the head of location-based services for NAFTEC, and he will be in dialogue with uh, Roger in Chicago talking about NAFTEC True. NAFTEC True is a new method for collecting data from maps. We're combining technology together, and in real time we're collecting uh, data that are related to the map, but as well related to the environment around the maps. So uh, that technology will enable us, as uh, Roger was mentioning earlier in, uh, in his speech, is that we will be collecting automatically most of the attributes that are part of the map. But not only that, we will be getting much more data that will enable us to come to build up uh, a representation of the world that is as close as possible to that representation of the world. But the other things, and, uh, and Roger will confirm that, is that we will know exactly not only about images, but where are the, the data, where is the data located, and how it relates to the pictures that we are collecting at the same time. So this system has actually driven quite a few cities around in the continental US, so I'll be happy to show you some sample data of what we are able to achieve with this. Now, this is what you see here is an aerial view of Las Vegas, Nevada. We're going to zoom in, and here you see a bubble, a panoramic bubble of a, uh, of the data that was collected. In the background, there are LiDAR points that also are collected at the same time. Let's move to the ground level. So you're actually inside the bubble right now. What you see in the image is the panoramic image. The, the 3D point clouds from the LiDAR is represented by points. Can you see it? So notice how well the two data sets are aligned together. So this is something that I haven't touched on too much. Um, it's called, and it's an attribute called registration. It is the ability to line up multiple data sets so that they are correctly on top of each other. Here's an example. What you see here is a building image and the same building collected by the LiDAR. Now, LiDAR collects position and reflectivity. It doesn't collect color information. But because of registration, we can assign a color value to each of the individual LiDAR points and here you see a 3D model that is fully colored um, and with texture information. Once we zoom into the model, you can see that the model actually consists of individual LiDAR points. With this, that also goes to another attribute that we can uh, uh, use to extract from the LiDAR here. And that is to measure the model here. This is a model of Union Station in Chicago. We can actually measure how high the column is to the exact length, and we know that it is 11.3 meters. So, uh, David, maybe you can comment on how this can uh, allow NAVTEC to really take this to the next level for a digital map products. Yeah, we, yeah thank you, Roger, for that. So, uh, um, actually, we've been saying that all along that we are moving from a 2D collection to a 3D collection. What Roger was highlighting to you is that every point class we are collecting are actually geocoded, not only reference from a Nix wire positioning, but as well the Z level. We know exactly where they are, and we can relate one to the other. So we'll be able to collect, as a good example, uh, like weight of the streets, like uh, how many lanes you get, and uh, uh, how heights, heights of the buildings, uh, heights of the uh, monuments, and things like that. But as well, uh, a lot of our co components that, thanks to the fact that all these clouds points are actually geocoded and we know what color we can achieve to that, we can automatically as well generate 3D data uh, out of that collection mechanism. Roger, can you, can you show us more data because we can do more even with that collection? As you watch this, notice how reflectivity allows us to recognize certain attributes and use algorithms to extract those attributes. Notice the, uh, the signs on the road that indicate street name, for example, is clearly visible uh, against the background because it has effectivity attributes to it. Same thing with the uh, pedestrian walks, uh, crosswalks, as well as lane marking. So how do we actually achieve this density of the data? Here is an example of um, the way that we do this. Now, what you see here is the LiDAR data. Uh, as it collects, the vehicle is driving down the road and it's rotating at high frequency. And so using color, we're able to show you how the dense data is collected. Now, this is something that uh, we want to stress here. The vehicle is driving down the road here in Las Vegas Boulevard in real time in posted speed limits. We're not stopping traffic. We're not using escort. 
as the vehicle drives, it is rotating and collecting data with the density that you see here. Once again, note that the attributes all show up of interest to us, not only at this time, but also in the future. For example, um, pedestrian skywalks are also here that you can see. So perhaps in the future, if we're interested in coding that product, we can use this data. So let me uh, stop here and, and perhaps uh, the yeah, maybe you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, I'd like to highlight some of the pictures you've seen there. As you've seen, as we're collecting as well the depth of the streets, we're able to identify where's the roads, where's the sidewalks. So we'll be able to collect automatically a lot of the attributes that are part of some of the products as named Discover Cities that are made to pedestrian. There are as well, as Roger was highlighting, we're collecting as well road signs automatically. And uh, so this kind of, uh, of collection mechanism will enable us uh, to move to the next steps in terms of scaling the products, but as well moving to new attributes. Another example uh, that Roger was uh, showing is that, um, uh, Roger, are you showing that right after? I think we're showing the storefronts. Okay, Roger, can you show us the, uh, the next data we're collecting uh, related to storefronts? Yes, let me go ahead and play some more of this sample data for you. So what you see here is, uh, once again, it's Las Vegas, Nevada. So um, moving to Las Vegas, we're going to New York City. And moving from the air onto the street level, you can see that the data that we collected in New York with the LiDAR data turning on the RGB value, the color value from the, from the LiDAR. Notice the, the rich the, uh, data sets for storefronts, McDonald's, and another information. Here's something that um, uh, collected from the panoramic, excuse me, the high-resolution cameras. So we can zoom in to the high-resolution camera image and clearly see here that it says this is Broadway at West 47th Street. So this is the ability that allows us to automatically and algorithmically extract features. Go ahead, uh, the yeah, video. Rogers, uh, yeah, I would like to jump on the last uh, on the last example you've given us. Uh, you know, my heart is very close to POI. POI is, 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 as you know, a good way for monetizing every content that goes with the map. As you as we have seen, we'll be able to collect automatically storefronts, but as well content of what is a storefront names of the POI. So uh, thanks to that new mechanism and a new uh, collection mechanism, we'll be able to scale our ability to collect POI and storefront and information related to that. Uh, do we have anything else that we would like to show, Roger? So one last thing here. This is the uh, the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. And once again, as the vehicle is driving at the uh, posted speed limit, we're able to collect and notice how the lane information is turning out. So if we have that information, then we can uh, automatically, for example, measure the lane width. This is one final example of sample data. This is Lombard Street in San Francisco. This poses a different challenge for data collection system, both in terms of the curvature as well as elevation change. Notice that our system uh, handled this very, very well. Uh, the data that's collected and rendered here uh, precisely shows what's going on uh, on uh, Lombard Street in terms of uh, the, uh, the data that uh, uh, is actually in, shown in real world there. So uh, here, finally, a couple examples of showing uh, our algorithm using the LiDAR data as well as panoramic image. Notice the highway guide signs are highly reflective and so they stand out. Our algorithm can automatically detect and go to the image information, again, based on registration. There, we then we can locate the exact image of the highway signs using algorithms, and once we are able to locate the image, now we can recreate that uh, highway sign using uh, our algorithm once again into a product what we call sinus reel in the digital form. So here, in the next frame, you will see the uh, recreated sign that our customers can use in their navigation products from us. And finally, using the same data, as you mentioned, we're able to measure bridge heights uh, and provide additional guidance for uh, our digital map. Thank you, Roger, for that. So um, uh, thank you, everybody, for your time. I hope you get a flavor of that uh, new technology that Naftec is launching called Naftec True. I invite you to uh, visit our booth. Uh, you will be seeing uh, how these product will, uh, the current product that we have and how this technology will be able to announce. So if you want to know more, please feel free. We're there, uh, available on the booth. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, David. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Wow, that was some demo. Stay tuned for more. Head all about Symbian at Mobile Industry Review.